everyone. I'm Dr. Ho Inshik. I'm going to talk about how to do polishing, glazing, and staining with hands-on after sintering, which was discussed before. Contents. I'm going to talk about three ways to smoothen the surface of zirconia, glazing, polishing, and staining. I talked about sintering. After sintering, the surface of crown needs to be smoothened. This is how it looks after sintering. For anterior teeth, we do glazing and staining on the surface. For premolars and molars, polishing and staining are done on the surface. Glazing of the anterior teeth. It is used to naturally smoothen the anterior teeth, which require no further coloring. As you can see here, this is the glazing furnace, which should be used. After milling, sintering is done, and it is followed by glazing, and then attached to the teeth. For molars, it is polished. It is to provide natural smoothening on the posterior teeth that do not require any more coloring. There are many different types of uh, polishing tools, the, the pointed ones, the feather type, and the wheel type. After milling, coloring is done followed by sintering and the surface is polished and that's dried in the mouth. Let's have a look at the process of polishing using a video. The flat surface is polished using a wheel like this. And in step two, using a wheel like this, it is further polished. The curved plane like a cluso plane the detailed grooves cannot be polished using a round wheel like this. For that, the feather-like wheel should be used to polish the grooves. Like this, it is polished. You can see it is shining. This is the last wheel that is used.
without glazing, sufficient smoothing and sheen can be achieved. Rather than unsophisticated glazing, polishing can provide much better surface. This type of a polishing tool doesn't really help. I don't prefer to use this for detailed groove polishing. The end of the tool can be dulled or worn out. The end of the tool can be worn out and get rounded. So it is limited in terms of the range that it can be used. Rather than this, the polishing tool that I used before can be much more effective. To provide the smoothing of the surface, the third way is the staining. This is used when the basic color of the tooth is pretty strong and has character, so additional coloring is required after sintering. This is the dense ply staining kit. It is based on the ceramic oxide, Mio, the staining kit. Before the procedure, you can see very unique color of the teeth. After milling, coloring is done before sintering. After sintering, it looks like this. This is far from the color of the natural teeth of the patient. The coloring and sintering is not good enough in this case. Therefore, the dense ply kit is used to do the staining after sintering. This is before staining, this is final staining, and the crowns are tried in. They look very similar to the color of the adjacent teeth. This is on another case. In the lower jaw, the first molar on the right side, the crown is to be remade. It is milled. And this is coloring before sintering. After sintering, it looks like this. Using the Mio kit, let me show you how to do the staining. First, on the palette, you need to put the staining colors. First, glazer is put for the bottom. And shade A. Shade D. They are removed from the bottle. And the slate for translucency is removed. Mammalian with four cusps and mammalian pumpkin for the cervical area. After that, for proper viscosity, glaze liquid is put beside each stain for proper viscosity. Now everything is ready. Now let's have a look at how the staining process goes. The glaze is not to be applied all over. I usually use it on the buckle side only. The occlusal surface under occlusal adjustment can have the glaze peeled off. That's not good. Therefore, it is done on the buckle side, which is the most important color. 
aesthetically. So on the buckle side, the color is added. And a little bit on the occlusal grooves. After that, from the cervical to occlusal side, the coloring will be done on the glaze. Shade A is used. This is the cervical area. The color is put on. After that, on the occlusal grooves, just a little bit. The coloring is done. To use the orange color on the cervical side, mammalian pumpkin is usually used. A very thin brush is used for detailed coloring. This is a dark color. If you apply it too much, it can stand out. So if you do it like this, the overall staining process is finished. The cusp area is not stained and it is polished so the cusp body and cervical area would have gradation of color which is very aesthetic the cusp would not be discolored as staining is not done there even if you do the occlusal adjustment as you can see the staining process is completed. Usually, I don't do the staining both on buccal and the lingual surfaces. I do the staining usually on the buccal surface and the grooves on the cusp. So the buccal surface is stained. The cusps and lingual surface is polished. So the crown is finally completed and uh, delivered in the mouth. Using the staining, the aesthetic effect is achieved. The color is similar to the adjacent teeth. If you look at this case, the patient has a unique color of teeth. There is a striped band with the usual coloring technique such tooth color cannot be made so using the dental system it is designed milled and the basic color of the crown is made using the coloring after coloring what process do we need to do for staining let's look at a video Likewise, first the glaze is applied on the buccal side, the interproximal area, lingual and cusp area, the staining should be avoided. In order to evenly distribute the color, I do the tapping. After that, for the whole coloring, the most frequently used shade A is used. Up and down, 
the shade A is distributed. So with the shade A, the base color is made. The cervical area, if you look at the adjacent tooth, it is a little bit yellowish. So it is colored with a stain called mamelon pumpkin for the cervical area. So it is a dark orange color. And in this patient, the stripe band exists. To represent that, a shade D is applied here and there. A very small amount. So it is colored like this. The incisor area, if you want it a little bit dark, the slate can be used for translucency. It is a bit grayish and you need to use a small volume, very minimally. Then the translucency effect on the cuspal area can be made. You shouldn't use it in large quantity. You should use it very sparingly. And on the body part for white stripe band, to make vertical crack lines, usually mammalian width is used, even though it is used quite rarely. So the stripe part is toned down and uh, we color that part again on the occlusal area, on the central fossa. Shade A is used to make a little bit of a shade effect, making the grooves look much more natural. The cusp area can discolor while occlusal adjustments are made, so it shouldn't be stained but polished. So this is how the staining is completed here. Start. So this is how the staining is completed. Staining is done on the buccal side and the grooves primarily. On the cusp and the lingual area, polishing is used. Finally, the crown is delivered. As you can see, the crown is almost the same as the adjacent tooth and the, the tooth before the procedure. When the color of the teeth of a patient has characters and very unique color staining should be done. Conclusion To smoothen the surface of teeth, there are two ways. 
as I said before, if the premolar and molar color is average color, polishing is good enough. However, when it comes to the anterior teeth, canine or premolars, if the buckle color of the tooth has characters and a very unique color, glazing and staining should be done. The lecture is completed. Let's go to Q&A session. The first question, for the finishing of zirconia prosthesis, what do you prefer between polishing and staining? In the past, for premolars and molars, polishing was used more. However, now, even for premolars and molars, to make natural buckle color, staining should be added. That is what I prefer. Recently, regardless of the position of the tooth, if it is not quite different from the average, staining is normally added. The second question, what do you think about zirconia aesthetic prosthesis using? The multiple color disc is advertised as not requiring coloring before sintering and staining after sintering. If the teeth color is very average, you can have satisfactory result, but uh, if the teeth color is very unique and has characters, it's difficult to get very good effect using the disc. So for teeth that is unique, coloring before sintering and staining after sintering should be used for better coloring. This is what I have prepared. Next time, I'm going to talk about the factors determining zirconia crowns aesthetics. Thank you for your attention.